Hey guys. Okay, I gotta get everything here. Squared away. Let's go up here. Oh crap. Well this was on all night. Hold on, guys. Oh, okay. Do, 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 do. Hey. All right. So we are all shared out. Hey, we're watching. We're all shared out on um. What's that thing called? Instagram and Facebook. My recording device is up. Um, how y'all doing? Hold on one second, Instagram. Uh, all right, there we go. Um, hey guys, happy Wednesday. So tonight we've got some fun stories. Um, if you are a fishing enthusiast, we have a story for you. Um, if you like brunch, I love brunch. Brunch is like... I love brunch, especially a bottomless brunch. Ooh. Um, if you like brunch, we have a story for you. Um, we also have, um, an intersection of technology and intellectual property that I want to get your opinions on. And then last, if you are a King's Hawaiian roll fan, I've got a story for you too. Okay. All right. Um, so we are getting started in just two minutes. So um, you don't get comfortable. Grab a drink. Um, maybe a snack or something. We are, ooh, ooh, excuse me. <laughs> I just kind of went frozen for a minute. Don't mind me. I be weird. I be weird. Um, how y'all doing? Before we get started, all right? Before we got started, oh, ooh, 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 ooh. <laughs> um, who's watching over on Facebook? Say hi, so I can say hi to you. Ba, ba, da, da, da. Very excited about tonight's show, guys. We're gonna have a grand old time. At the Grand Old Opry. <laughs> oh, I want to say hi to my parents, to my sister, to my family members and friends who watch. Hey, Cheryl. Um, everybody who supports this show. Hey, y'all. Um, couldn't do it without you. We're getting started in just a few moments. Cheryl, how you doing, girl? Uh, and we are going to talk about brunch wars. All right, it's time to start. Let me hit the pause button and then hit, or mute button, and hit the record button. All right, here we go. Welcome, 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 every. Uh, hold on. <laughs> 
Welcome, 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 everybody. Happy Wednesday. Welcome to NPL Legal Dish. This is my Monday through Wednesday live broadcast where I teach business and legal concepts using pop culture and celebrity news. If this is your first time seeing my face or hearing my voice and you're wondering, who is this lady? I am Natalie Pierre Lewis. I am the host of the show and I am the owner and operator of NPL Consulting LLC, a business formation firm. What that means is I help people like yourself get your business paperwork together. So things like making sure you have your articles of incorporation with the state, EIN numbers and DUNS numbers, making sure you have contract templates for clients and partners, uh, brand protection strategies and hiring and training strategies so you don't get sued for discrimination. I help you set all of these things up. If you are wondering why I'm qualified to help you do all of this, I'm very happy that you asked. I'm a licensed attorney, have been one for 15 years and counting. I've started multiple businesses for myself and others, both online and offline. I've had many careers in the realms of entrepreneurship, the law, education, hospitality and administrative support. And most important, I'm very passionate about making business and legal education as accessible to everyone as possible. Not everybody has the time, the money or the desire to go to business school, uh, or law school, but a lot of you have amazing business ideas. And if you're going to be successful, there are just some things that you need to know. There's no way around it. So that is why I'm here. So, um, yeah, I'm here to help you. So if you're in the startup phase of your business or you've been in business for a while, but you need to really, you know, tighten the ship up or you just have a business idea and you don't know where to get started, I'm your girl. Contact me. Go to linktree forward slash NPL consulting firm. There you can book yourself a free 15 minute consultation or a talk to me Tuesday session where you can get 25 minutes for $25 or a one hour um, coaching session that starts at $279 an hour. Okay. Um, as well at linktree forward slash NPL consulting firm, you can download the free biz launch cheat sheet that helps you choose and start your dream business in seven days or less. You can access many of my video trainings, like our Duns number training that we are focusing on this month. Uh, you can also subscribe to the YouTube channel and to the podcast so that if you ever miss a live broadcast, you can, um, excuse me, you can watch at your leisure or listen at your leisure. Okay. Uh, and last but not least at Linktree forward slash, Hey Margaret at Linktree forward slash NPL consulting firm is where you can get your show merch, your NPL legal dish show merch. So your mugs, your t-shirts, they're all there. Go to Linktree forward slash NPL consulting firm. Okay. All right. Uh, but before we move on to the second part of our intro, I want to acknowledge Cheryl. Thank you for asking how I'm doing. I'm doing very well. Thank you. And Hey Margaret, uh, but yeah, moving on to the, the second part, why we're here, okay? Because y'all didn't just come to hear me, to, to hear what I do on a day-to-day -day basis. We're here for a show. We're here for NPL Legal Dish. So here's how the show work just works, just in case you don't know. Uh, I pull stories from the news, stories from blog sites, stories that you guys send me. Uh, I pull them from anywhere, and I choose the ones that have lessons that we can learn as business owners, and we talk about them. So this is a time for you to get involved, for you to ask questions and give comments as long as they are respectful. I will be asking you to uh, put some emojis in the boxes. I will be asking you your opinions on things. So I want you guys to stay alert. Um, I had one more thing to say before we moved on. Um, oh yeah. And at the start of the show, we do our NPL nugget where I teach you a quick business or legal concept in just a couple of minutes that I think you should know. Okay. All right. So, uh, that isn't, that is just a quick rundown of what's going to be happening tonight. Um, any other, yeah, uh, no other real announcements. So we are just going to hop into it. Okay. Um, so our NPL nugget of the night, who can tell me what we have been focusing on for the entire month of March. We're about 10 days in. What have we been talking about? um, on the live show for the month of March. What is the topic that we are covering this month? I said it at the, at it, in the intro. What is the, yes, Cheryl, Cheryl's paying attention. We are covering Dunn's numbers. Okay. We have defined Dunn's numbers. We have talked about some of the reasons why you need a Dunn's number. Um, if you have missed any of those, you can go back and watch, you know, last week's and mm, yeah, last week's uh, episodes for the show as well. Um, you can pick up the Dunn's number uh, video training where I go through the ins and outs of Dunn's numbers. Um, if you want to catch up on things, but, uh, what the tidbit, thank you, Margaret Dunn's numbers, but the tidbit that I wanted to give you guys today 
is that just like an EIN number is free, a DUNS number is free, right? Um, so I've told you guys many times there are lots of attorneys out here trying to charge you anywhere between $75 and $125 to get an EIN number. Well, in the same way, there, there are people out there who are going to try and swindle you out of your money to get a DUNS, a DUNS number. And I want to let you know that a DUNS and Bradstreet number is completely free to apply for. Now, that is with the caveat that you know how to apply for it. If you don't understand the application process for a DUNS number, then of course, you know, you should hire someone with the expertise to teach you. But if someone just wants to take your money so they can apply for the DUNS number and then give it to you and not show you how they did it, I wouldn't do that. Okay. Uh, but just so you know, DUNS numbers are free. You shouldn't have to pay for one. All right. Okay, moving on to our stories for the evening, okay? Mm. Okay, um, does, has anybody here, anybody watching, have any of you ever been fishing? Um, I personally have not been fishing. I know that a lot of people find it to be an enjoyable sport, um, something that's very relaxing, I just don't like the idea of sitting in the middle of the water and touching worms. Um, Margaret asked, oh, Margaret asked a really good question. Can you get a DUNS number before you have a business or do you have to have the business first? Uh, a DUNS number is specifically for business entities because if you don't have a business, then you would just be using your social security number, okay? All right. I hope that answers your question, Margaret. Okay, but uh, so Margaret, oh, Margaret said she went fishing a long time ago. All right, yeah, I've never been fishing. I've seen tons of, you know, clips and videos and things. I know people who like to fish, but um, it ain't my jam, but that's okay. Everything ain't for everybody, right? Uh, but if you are a fishing enthusiast or if there is um, someone in your life who enjoys fishing, um, I have some good news for them. Okay. Oh, Cheryl, you love fishing. You said it's therapeutic. Okay. Cheryl, since you love fishing, what is one of the, uh, what's one of the kind of annoying things that happens when you're fishing? Something that fisher, fisher people complain about when they are fishing about, um, their fish hooks. What happens? What's something that happens a lot? What is something that happens a lot? We have we have a fishing lover here, so she may be able to to answer this question. I want to see if it's as common as this story uh, reported. Okay. Um. But apparently there there is um a persistent and common problem for people who fish having to do with their fish hooks and uh, the worms. Cheryl, can you tell us what that persistent issue is? Mm -mm -mm -mm. Hmm. Okay, I'm gonna give Cheryl. Um, I'm gonna assume that Cheryl is typing it in, but I don't wanna. I don't wanna hold up too much air here. Um, so apparently, when you're fishing, there's a big problem with either the worms slipping off the hook or the fish just eating the worms and never actually getting on the hook. Cheryl, can you confirm that for us, please? As someone who loves fishing, is is worms slipping off the hook or fish, you know, eating the worms but never actually getting on the fish hook? Is that a problem when you are fishing or is that an issue? I wouldn't say a problem. Is that an issue that people encounter when they are fishing? Um, and if you're watching the replay, please um, let me know your experiences in the comments. Like I said, I've never been fishing, so I don't know, you know, what it entails. Um, okay. Um, Cheryl said, lately, it's not enough in the store, in the stores and the worms coming, come, coming off. Oh, so Cheryl said, lately, the problem is there's not enough in the stores and the worms come off the hook easily. Okay, so she did say the worms come off the hook easily, right? So that is a persistent problem. Well, Cheryl, my fish, fishing, fishing loving friend, I have some good news for you. Um, there is an 18 year old senior in um, the city of Fond du Lac, I think Minnesota, 
Um, he has recently developed a fish hook that prevents worms from slipping off of the fish hook. Uh, he is a STEM student. He, um, hold on. Cheryl said you can thread the worm on the hook, but the fish do manage to eat the worm without catching the hook. Well, Cheryl, you may want to invest in this new fish hook. It was invented by an 18 year old senior. Um, it, it was for a project, you know, and he, he's a fisherman and he was, he saw the problem and he tried to fix it. So he invented a fish hook that prevents the worms from slipping off and prevent and keep and make sure that the fish get hooked onto your fish hook. So what do you think this 18 year old did to protect his invention? We don't talk about this a lot on the show, but what, what intellectual property protection protects your, uh, hi Mimi OG 911. What intellectual property protection protects your inventions. This 18 year old has protected his fish hook using what mechanism? Who can tell me? Yes, Margaret. Margaret is on it like white on rice. Yes. And Cheryl's on it too. Yes. This 18 year old has patented his fish hook design. He, um, so how did he patent it? Well, he hired an attorney because he said he didn't understand the process, but one of the first things he had to do, he drew, you know, designs of his fish hook. And then he created a prototype using a 3d printer. And, you know, he submitted his application and now he has a patent for this fish hook, which means for the next 15 years, he can prevent anybody else from making, selling, or using similar types of fish hooks. So unless you're using his type of fish hooks, you are violating a patent. That is the power of intellectual property. That is the power of patents. And this young man had enough forethought and enough, you know, I don't, I don't, you know, he's a STEM student. I'm, I'm sure he's very smart. He had enough, um, you know, what do you call that? He knew enough to protect his invent his invention. So now he has the patent to a fish hook that will prevent fish from eating the worms and not getting caught and will also prevent the worms from slipping off of your fish hook. So if you have a fishing lover in your life or if you enjoy fishing like Cheryl does here, um, you know, look out for these no slip fishing hooks that may be coming to a bait and tackle shop near you. Cheryl, is that something that is exciting for you? Um, when, when, you know, when, when, and if you go fishing again, is that a type of fish hook that would entice you something that you would be interested in investing in? Let me know, Cheryl. Okay. Margaret Massey said that's a good invention. That is a really good invention. It's, um, I encourage you guys to look it up because it's not even something that, you know, came from scratch. He just added something extra to something that already existed. Um, but yeah, Cheryl, let me know if that no slip fish hook is something that, you know, you'd be excited about the next time you're able to go fishing. Okay. Meanwhile, we're going to move on to our next story. Okay. So as you can see the title, hold on. Um, Cheryl said, yes, it sounds like something I would be interested in purchasing. Okay. So Cheryl, if you go to a bait and tackle shop and you see these no slip fish hooks, I want you to take a picture and I want you to tag me. Okay. All right. Okay. Moving on to our next, um, story of the evening. Uh, as you can see, the show is called brunch wars. If you like brunch, give me some type of breakfast emoji. Give me some bacon. Give me some eggs. Give me a plate. Give me something. If you like brunch, give me some type of breakfast emoji. Okay. Um, brunch. I love going to brunch. If you are from the DMV area, you know that on, or when the world was open on any given day, there were probably, or on the weekend, there were probably at least 15 different brunches going on. Right. Um, and, uh, what is a common drink what what is a drink that usually is uh that that is usually at a brunch? It's an alcoholic drink. Thank you, Margaret Massey. I think that's a donut. When you go to brunch, what are they usually serving? It's an alcoholic drink, but it's very citrusy. 
comes in a champagne glass. Yes, Cheryl, I'm mimosa. I'm a yes, Mimi0911, a mimosa. I love me some mimosas. Best mimosa I ever had was actually not even a regular mimosa. I went to this fusion restaurant, this fusion Japanese Mexican restaurant in downtown DC, and they had guava mimosas, guys. They, they were so delicious. Anyway, getting back to the story. So yeah, mimosas are a very common drink at brunch, right? Well, um, we have an issue with two restaurants that want to use the name Mimosa in their name, and there's a little battle happening. So there are two restaurants. One is named Mimosa House, and the other is named Friends with Benedict's, like, you know, an Eggs Benedict. Friends with Benedict's Mimosa House. So we've got Mimosa House, and we've got Friends with Benedict's Mimosa House. Um, now, Mimosa House, they got a trademark for their restaurant name, um, right? Uh, and they've been operating for a while. <clears throat> so uh, they sued Friends with Benedict's Mimosa House uh, for trademark infringement. Now, both of these restaurants, they are brunch themed. So when you go to these restaurants, you're going expecting brunch, right? Okay. Now, um, Friends with Benedict's, they have said that Mimosa House is being a bully because mimosas are generic in the brunch uh, in the brunch arena. Like I said, when I asked you guys, what is a drink that is that often accompanies brunch? Y'all said mimosa. That's the first thing that came up. So Friends with Benedict's, their argument was like, look, even if Mimosa House has this trademark, mimosa is a generic term when it comes to brunch. And we are both brunch restaurants. That is their argument. So I want to know from you guys, what do you think the judge said about using Mimosa House? Do you think that they agreed with the Mimosa House that has the trademark? Or do you think they agreed with friends with Benedict's who said that Mimosa is generic? Well, who do you think the judge agreed with? Because Mimosa House is saying, look, we got this uh, trademark from Mimosa House, so you need to tell Friends with Benedict's to take that out their name. And Friends with Benedict's Mimosa House says, look, mimosas are generic for brunch. Everywhere you go for brunch, you're getting a mimosa. Y'all are not doing anything innovative out here. Um, so what do you think the judge said? What do you guys What do you guys think the judge said? Do, 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 do. I can't wait to have mimosas. Um, Mimi G0911 said mimosa house one. Margaret Massey said mimosa house. Actually, no. The judge actually agreed with friends with Benedict's. He said that for the, for the time being, now the case isn't over. They still have to go, you know, and get a final verdict. But right now, while they are, you know, getting their arguments in and depositions and things like that, the judge has said that both of these restaurants can use the name Mimosa House because mimosas are generic when it comes to brunch. And these are both brunch themed restaurants. Cheryl said friends with Benedict's. Okay, so you uh, you got it. So, um, but how many, do you guys think that the judge got it right? Is the judge right in saying that mimosas are generic so you guys can both use the names till we come to a final decision? Or should the judge have sided with Mimosa House? What do you guys think? Mimi Gio 911 said, uh, interesting. Yes, it is very interesting. Do you think the judge got it right? If you think the judge got it right, give me a thumbs up. If you think the judge got it wrong, give me a thumbs down. <clears throat> okay. Oh, oh, excuse me. If you think the judge got it right, give me a thumbs up. If you think he got it wrong, give me a thumbs down. Y'all ain't got no opinion? No opinion? Um, I think the judge got it right. Uh, me, okay, here we go. Mimi G0911 said, the judge got it right. I, I agree. I think the judge did got did get it right because when I think brunch, I automatically think mimosas, but I don't think of a specific restaurant when I think mimosa. When I think mimosa, I'm like, I can go get some champagne and some orange juice and make my mimosa right now. I don't associate a mimosa with a particular uh, restaurant, right? Um, so Margaret thinks they got it, thinks the judge got it wrong. Okay, Margaret, why do you think the judge got it wrong? And Cheryl thinks the judge got it right. So Margaret, I want to hear, I want to hear your argument. Why do you think the judge got this, got this, um, uh, 
interim verdict because it's not final. They're still fighting this. But while they're fighting it, they can both still use the name. So, Margaret, I want to know why you think the judge got it wrong. Why do you think they got it wrong, Margaret? All right. And while Margaret is giving us her argument, um, hold on. Mimi, oh, Mimi G0911 said, I've wondered that about the name of my business. I didn't trademark it, so I always wonder if someone would come after me. Well, girl, you need to book your free 15-minute consultation with me so I can, you know, give you some tips so that you you are in so that you are infringement proof, all right? Or so somebody doesn't steal your work. So make sure you go to linktree forward slash MPL consulting firm and hit the button that says book your one-on-one session. -on -one session and get the free 15 minute consult if you haven't done that already. Okay. <clears throat> All right. Uh, before we move on to our next stories, I want to remind you guys that you are watching NPL legal dish. This is my Monday through Wednesday live broadcast where I teach uh, business and legal concepts using pop culture and celebrity news. If you are in the startup phase of your business and you need some legal guidance from, uh, you know, a savvy friend like myself, go to linktree forward slash NPL consulting firm and book your free 15 minute consultation today. Okay. So Margaret said that the judge got it wrong because they registered the trademark. Um, <clears throat> Okay, yeah, schedule that, Mimi. Uh, Margaret said because they registered the trademark. But, Margaret, there have been instances in the fa in the past where um, things that were trademark have become so generic that they, um, they, they've lost their trademark power. Like, um, I believe Kleenex is one. Um... Band-Aid is not like there, there are a lot of terms that used to be brand names that have become, you know, just generic words for, for those products. Um, and, and sometimes trademark law does have to catch up with that. And I think that brunch, brunch has become a very common thing. You know, like, like I said, I live in DC when, when everything was open, you could literally go up and down 14th street and find like, you know, 10 different brunches at the same time. So, um, so I think it's just a matter of, of time evolving. Okay. All right. Um, moving on to our next story of the evening. Um, I think mo most of you are out of college at this time. Um, but if you, you know, if you went to college, um, did you ever go on a campus tour? If you ever, you know, or even if you didn't go to college, if at any point in your life, you went on some type of college campus tour, Please give me, or just please say yes in the comments, okay? All right. Uh, I remember I, I went I went on a few college campus tours before um, I decided to go to Boston College, okay? Uh, now, in these campus tours, you know, there are students there who show you all the landmarks of the school. Mimi went on one. Who show you all the landmarks of the school, show you where to go. Margaret said yes. Uh, you know, all of the academic buildings, the libraries, the, the, the athletic facilities, da, 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 right? Um, but of course, because we are in the age of COVID, uh, these tours are not happening because you can't be in these groups. These, these uh, college tours usually are groups of like, you know, 10 to maybe even 20 people you know, walking in a group. And because of social distancing, it's not really feasible to do this at this time. So of course someone has come up with a with an online alternative. There is a um, there is a website uh, and a, a company called Live Campus Tours where you can uh, where you know students at different universities will take you on a virtual tour of the school. Like they'll t they'll take you all around the place and show you different places. Um, Apparently people really love these tours because they're not, you know, the scripted tours that the schools do. It's by, you know, regular students showing you even, you know, the, the, the things that maybe the school isn't too, isn't necessarily highlighting, but that they think is really cool. You know, which, which cafeteria has the best food, you know, I don't know, where do you go to, I don't know, wh which dorm, you know, has the best parties, who knows, I don't know. Anyway, but people are loving these live campus tours and they, they're doing it with a bunch of schools all over the country. Um, and when you go to the website, 
all you see is the school name and you know maybe a, a small picture of what the campus looks like there are there's no branding they're not using any school logos no crests they're not using any school lettering nothing like that they just give you the school name so if it's like you know Catholic University of America, it'll just say Catholic University of America, and then maybe, you know, a picture that someone took of the front of the school. Or if it's, you know, Ohio State University, it'll just say Ohio State University and maybe a picture of, you know, a well-known, I don't know, maybe Mirror Lake at um, Ohio State University. Um, but a lot of schools, they are very angry with this uh, service called Live Campus Tours, and they are trying to file infringement trademarks, or, or they're trying to get th these videos taken down using trademark law. They're saying that, you know, we don't want, um, we're, we're not affiliated with these tours, so we don't like the fact that they're happening. But remember, I said on this website, they're not using any logos, they're not using any school crests. They're not using school colors. All they're doing is literally listing the name and a picture that, you know, someone might've taken while they rode past the school. So I want to know from you guys, right? Do you think that live campus, are they violating any intellectual property laws? Do these schools have, you know, a credible argument that these, these live campus tours shouldn't take place and that they're violating the school's intellectual property, right? What do you think? Do you think the schools are just grasping at straws or do they have a, a, a real concern about these live campus tours? And I, I think these campus tours are actually a great idea because they're not official. It's like, you know, you can get a real sense of what the school is like. Um, so what do you guys think? Do you think that... Uh, the schools have a right to be mad or do you think that they are doing too much? Is life campus tours violating any intellectual property? Where y'all at? Y'all so quiet. Okay. Um, Margaret Massey said, I agree with the school because the school name is still being used. Okay. So you said it doesn't matter that they're used. They're not using logos or school colors. The fact that they are listing the school period on their site is uh, a violation of intellectual property. That's what you're saying, Margaret? Does anybody else agree with Margaret? Does anybody, uh, does anybody want to counter that with their own argument? What do you guys think? Um, any others? Cheryl said, if they're not using the logos or crests, I do not see the issue. Um, okay. Uh, so Margaret says the fact that they're using the name is enough. Cheryl said they're not using the logos or crests. Uh, so she doesn't see the issue. Um, I'm a little ambivalent because yeah, they're not using any of the logos or crests, right? But the draw might just be the name of the school. Cause if it's my dream school, let's say, you know, they got, let's say my dream school is Penn state and I find Penn State on this website so I can take a tour, the draw isn't the tour, the draw is Penn State, right? Um, so I can see both sides of that argument, uh, but we will have to wait and see. But because they're not using actual, I mean, unless the, 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 you know, the literal school name is, is trademarked or something. I don't, I don't know. Maybe, maybe they can do that then. Um, but if they're not using logos and crests, there might, there, there, it might be an uphill battle for these schools to come after live campus tours for, uh, intellectual property infringement. Okay. All right. Uh, okay. Moving on to our last story of the evening. This is for all my comfort food lovers. If you like King's Hawaiian rolls, give me a bread emoji, some type of bread emoji. If you like King's Hawaiian rolls, give me a bread emoji. Um, if you don't know what King's Hawaiian rolls are, they're like, there's some dinner rolls. They are delicious. They're kind of sweet almost. Um, and they come in a very distinctive orange packaging. Okay. Very distinctive. Um, 
Margaret Massey said, that's a good idea. Maybe the school should have thought of doing virtual tours. Yeah, exactly. Why didn't the schools think about doing virtual tours? Hello? <laughs> All right. But um, yes, do y'all, if you like King's Hawaiian rolls, give me a bread emoji. Cheryl said, perfect for, ooh, girl, you just gave me some ideas. Yes. Hawaiian's King French toast. Okay. All right. Okay. I see you, girl. I see it. You trying to, you trying to mess up my diet, but that's okay. <laughs> I'm just kidding. All right. So, you know, we know and love King's Hawaiian rolls. Um, and we know that King's Hawaiian, they come in a very distinctive orange packaging. Uh, well, King's Hawaiian has been on a tear. They have been suing a lot of different people for trying to make knock off King's Hawaiian rolls and using their distinctive packaging. Why do you think now they don't call the, they don't call the rolls Hawaiian rolls. They're different names, but they do use the orange packaging. Why do you think King's Hawaiian is so upset that these rivals are using this orange packaging? Margaret Massey said, yes, I like them because they're not using the name. They're not calling it King's Hawaiian. They're not using Hawaiian period. Why do you think King's Hawaiian is so upset at these people using this orange packaging? Why? Mm. Why is my house making these noises? Okay. Why do you think Kings of Wine is so um, upset about, you know, different brands using orange packaging to, uh, you know, do their own version of rolls? Margaret Massey said the orange package is their signature. Absolutely, absolutely. When you have a trademark, when you have something that defines your brand, right? People associate your brand with certain qualities, with a certain standard. So you don't want other people out here using the symbol that represents your business so that if they're not doing as good a job, that does not reflect poorly upon your brand. Um, Cheryl said orange is their signature packaging. Yes, absolutely. Okay. Hi, Roxy 51 Rye. But yes, so King's Hawaiian has come to a settlement with a couple of these, um, with a couple of these uh, knockoff Hawaiian rolls. They're going to have to stop using the distinctive orange packaging and get a little bit more creative. But it's very important for you to defend your space, um, you know, in your industry. Look, in, in the bread industry, there's so many different types of bread out there. You go to the bread aisle and there's like a hundred different types of bread, right? So if somebody is looking for some type of Hawaiian roll and everybody is doing orange packaging, how is King's Hawaiian roll supposed to stand out, right? Orange is their color. So yeah, they were absolutely totally right for going after these knockoffs. Like you couldn't even change the color on the bag, bruh. Uh, but yeah, <clears throat> but uh, good luck to King's Hawaiian. Your rolls are delicious and you deserve all the things. Okay. All right. So, um, those were the stories that, uh, yeah, those were the stories that I had for you this evening. Roxy agrees with me. Um, we talked about, we talked about the, 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 the no slip fish hook, my fishing fans. Y'all want to look out for that. An 18 year old senior just patented a fish hook that, um, doesn't let the worm slip off and, you know, doesn't let the fish just eat the worm off the hook. Uh, we talked about the the brunch wars and using mimosa in your restaurant name. We talked about the live campus tours, uh, the, the, the virtual tours that are happening online and the universities aren't happy. And we talked about Kings Hawaiian settling cases with people using their distinctive orange packaging. So, um... If you have any questions about those stories, uh, I'm going to give y'all two minutes to get them in. If you also have any questions about Dunn's numbers, which is our topic of the month, now is your time to get those questions in. Um, uh, you got two minutes. Uh, while you do that, I want to re remind you guys to go to Linktree forward slash NPL consulting firm to book your one on one sessions. Also, make sure that you have downloaded the Biz Launch Cheat Sheet. Um, the Biz Launch Cheat Sheet not only is it a guide to help you, um, you know, get your business started in seven days or less, it is also how you get on my 
email list with my newsletter where, you know, I update you on what's going on every week. Okay. Roxy said, thank you for the update of the topics. No problem. No problem, my dear. Um, Yes, as well, make sure, you know, if you don't have your DUNS number and you are trying to, you know, develop business credit or get your products into big box stores or, you know, get a business loan or get your app into the iOS space, um, those are one of the many things that you need a DUNS number for. So if you don't know how to apply for one, make sure you go to linktree forward slash NPL Consulting Firm, hit the first button and pick up the DUNS number workshop. Um, make sure that you pick up your show merch, your mugs, the, and the t-shirts, the t-shirts come in Navy black and white. Um, yeah, so we will convene back here tomorrow on Monday at 8 PM Eastern stand Eastern standard time. Um, if you find any stories that you want me to talk about, please make sure that you send them to my inbox. I love it. When you send me stories, what else did I want to tell you? I think that's all I have. So I'm going to leave y'all here. Have a wonderful night. Take care of yourselves. Goodbye.